Hello ladies and gentlemen, part three of Birmingham rundown areas, ghetto areas of the West Midlands. I'm going to re be recording the streets on the outskirts of Birmingham in rough areas, a few subways that I missed off last time. Um, if I cut back fast, it's because it's for my own safety. A lot of people hang out here, shoot up drugs. This subway here absolutely reeks. Now this is used by a lot, I don't mean a lot, of drug addicts. So I have to be extremely, look, someone's bag. Look at all the rubbish. Use needles. It's horrendous. I'm gonna cut back. This is where I had to cut the video short last time. Because I was coming up here, there was about 20 homeless people. Looks like they're off grafting at the minute. That is an extremely dangerous subway. Um, yeah. Just use needles everywhere. People poo in these. I've seen big chunks of poo and everything. Look, somebody could have had their own bag stolen. I need to get out of here because there's no cameras around here. Birmingham Council are going to shut these down. The sooner the better. So I'll cut back and I'll be in another rough area. That subway is on this road. Near the mosque. I'm not sure which road this is. Someone can tell me that they're from Birmingham. Let me know what this road is. Kicking off already. So I walk around Birmingham a lot. I do a lot of walking for our mental health. And I've seen it all. And all the places where everybody hangs out. I've seen absolutely every, everything. And it's only getting worse. It's only getting worse. But yeah, I'm gonna show you a few places. Obviously, me recording, it can be dangerous, I keep saying it, but it can be. Because people don't want to be recorded. Especially if they're up to no good. So, this little spot here. Is where they shoot up. I don't really want to go in there. See? Look. I'm going to cut back. So guys, I'm not even lying. We're literally in Birmingham, near Highgate. Look. And right over there is where the crap den is. Where I've just shown you. There is no one in there at the minute. There might be people sleeping further in. So yeah. I'm going to move from here, there's loads of places, absolutely loads, I'm going to take you to an even bigger camp in a minute and you'll be shocked, that's if it's still there, but it has been for months, so I'm going to take you to that place now, so just bear with me guys. Now on the Stratford Road, coming into Sparkbrook, extremely rough area. So I'm not going to record that much around here, but I'm just going to show you this other drug, drug den camp. We're on the way there now. We're here. Start a small heath. This is one of the biggest camps. Set up on a road. Right near Tesla. Look at it. I don't even want to go in there. This is probably watchers about. 
Uh, but I'm going to move from here now, I just wanted to show you it all. See? People are sleeping here, shooting off. They probably still do. But yeah, that's in small leaf. Yeah, test the garage. I'm gonna cut back and I'm gonna speak to you. People are even setting up camp here. Road. I'll cut back because of the loud noise. Hi guys, a bit quieter down here. Now, there are more HMOs in Small Heath, Birmingham than anywhere else in Birmingham. So say you're homeless and you got nowhere to go and you want to have rent a room out in Birmingham and you want to get paid by, you want the rent to be paid by Birmingham City Council. So they'll probably give their landlord of the HMO about £475 a month. That's alright I suppose, for a room. However, the landlords have found a loophole. And this loophole is, if they change the HMO to supported accommodation, they can turn that 475 a month rent per person into a thousand pounds a month. So basically, in a four bedroom house, if it was a HMO, under HMO rules, they'd get about 2,000 for that house. If it was supported accommodation, for the same amount of rooms rented out, they would make 4,000 a month. And all the requirements that the council ask of them is to have a support worker to the client at least one hour a week and that class is then as a supported accommodation so say you was offered to go and supported accommodation and uh, you go into the supported accommodation they sign you up your housing benefit will get paid directly to the landlord and all they have to do, the landlord, is to provide a support worker to you for one hour a week and that's it. But in most cases the support worker is not seeing them every week and definitely not seeing them for an hour every week. So really they're ripping people off and they're making a huge amount of money. The turnover is in the millions for people, landlords, with landlords that have properties. Some landlords have properties like 50 to 60 to 70 to 100 properties and they're renting them all out as supported accommodation. So yeah, sorry I couldn't get my words out there. I need a drink of water because I've walked so far. But yeah, it's just a short video just of a few places in Birmingham. I'm sorry for the wind. I've got no special equipment yet. But I'm going to sort that out very soon. But yeah, just wanted to add that on at the end about HMOs and um, the landlords find a loophole with supported accommodation and there's so many bad landlords out there at the minute and vulnerable people are suffering. So yeah, <laughs> that is all I wanted to say. But yeah, there'll be another video uploaded shortly, soon. Okay, so take care everybody. Sorry for the rush end, rushed ending. It's just getting very windy out here. Thank you.